Hello, welcome to the Stitching Post, and I'm going to walk you through bias binding and why you would use bias binding. Um, first off, most reasons why is if you're using a quilt and have a scalloped edge on it, anything that has a circle, if you want to make little mug um, things that you could put your coffee cup on, placemats that you want as an oval or a circle, anything that has curves in it, you wanna use a bias on it so that it gives a nice rounded edge and doesn't uh, crunch up. And a quick little backstory to me, when back east I used to sew professionally for interior designers, pillows, and you always did bias, bind, you know, bias cording on the edge. Same thing as binding, just with the cord in it. So when I came here and did my first quilt, I cut everything on the bias. And when I brought it in, they were like, why? And I went, because that's how you make binding. They're like, no, that uses more fabric. And the answer is yes, it does. It depends how many cuts you want um, or how big of um, a quilt or whatever you're doing is. So I use two rulers. Uh, to do this and you want to make sure you have a 45 degree mark and for this first one if I put this right up to my selvage up at the top because we know the selvage is a straight edge and here's my 45 degree angle I then lay my ruler on top of that going down the fabric so I now know this cut, it's my first cut, is on a 45 degree angle. So let me back this up to show you how I did that, because this was my first cut right here. And I knew that I was right on this line with the edge of my ruler and I use a long ruler, and I would suggest the longest you can get. Reason why is then you're only using your rotary cutter once to go around. I also start at the corner. So this was a half yard cut. I ironed and opened up. Once you've done your first cut, you can then from there measure your two and a half inches and cut straight up. Now, notice I didn't go all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna gently pull this away so I know where I stopped and I can pull my ruler down. But you do want to be precise. I'm going to cut one more. And the reason why is I want to show you, I'm going to go from the smaller side this time, how to join. If you're doing a full quilt and you want to join your edges. Actually, let me do it so you can I'll explain why. Because these are already on an angle, so if I'm cutting a lot of strips, because I have a huge quilt and the whole edge is scallops, I will take these and stack them all one on top of the other going the same way. When you want to sew two together, it's really easy because remember, you have to go um, on the bias even when you're sewing, you're not doing straight edges. So I can take this Oops, I have it the wrong way. 
and raw edge to raw edge. And if you notice, I'm offsetting it just over a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna come over here. Now, when I'm piecing, and my, I like to do a half inch seam on this piecing because I like to fold them open for less bulk. And I'm starting right in this corner. And I'm just going straight down. And now you can finger press or get your iron and it matches up. And if it's off an eighth, that's okay. But if you don't line them up, you'll be off a lot. And then when you fold this in half to do your binding, you just snip these edges right off. So I would iron this flat and snip these. Then I would take, oops, go ahead. So on the bias just gives more? The bias has a, a much, it's like stretching the fabric. So if you look at this, it has a lot more give to it. Thank you, great question. Where if you pull it this way with the weft or the warp, it's flat. And I want to be able to come around. Have that flexibility. To have that flexibility. I am one who, um, you can come over and pin. I'm not in love with pins because I tend to run over them with my machine. So these clips, I love, I like the tin, but they're the really little ones. And I will use these all the way around because I find these are easier to undo. So sewing it on, you can use the clips or, and I don't know if you want, I just, I like to know my quarter inch um, as to where I'm doing sewing. And I go slow because I'm stretching the fabric a little as you go. You want to, and I don't know if you want to stand up to see. And I want to pay attention to that quarter inch seam. Now, I am going to stop here. So let's go back to my way how to do this. <laughs> so for me, I'm going to cut this on the bias. And turn this raw edge in a half inch. And lay it down. Just for a second, I'm going to put a pin in. Because this side I'm not going to use. And here, whoops. going to do it the reverse way. So if I pin this in here, or like I said, because I tend to run over pins, I clip. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take a smaller bite since I goofed and cut this, and lay it over this, and put the two together. So before you cut, good lesson, check. I always like 
getting different techniques for doing the binding. So, that I have never done a double fold binding in my life. I do uh, single fold ones. And so now, and again, really? this one's sloppy because it's not tight and um, good, but if you look here, it works really well. That one actually. Can't even tell. Oh, yeah. That one's a mm -hmm. seam. Mm -hmm. But what I want to show you here is when you turn this over and come in, this is also where I like these clips because now I will clip. And if you wanted to do your stitch in the ditch, you can, but I'm going to show you how to do a simple whip stitch. Even also, though you didn't like the end here, it actually it works. With, oh yeah, and with blue thread. And it you can um, just one second. Fold this in so do you remember and iron it down. You'd iron that before you stitched it? I like to iron before I stitch it. Okay. Does that shrink or do anything to calm the fabric no. down? No. Um, it just gives it a nice crease um, on it. So these were ironed. Uh, but as you notice on the back, when we are doing hand stitching, it, will, it has a tendency, it could pucker a little. And the machine stitching won't? Um, no, the machine stitching would as well okay. because it's a circle. It's why I like hand stitching. You can kind of stitch it in. Yeah. So I brought thread and I like to get as close to the color as I can. There isn't a specific needle I use. I kind of... Um, it's whatever I have in my pin cushion. Um, a little trick to threading a needle is if you come to the end and fold it over your needle, press between your thumb and forefinger and pull it out, it's much easier to pull through your needle. To put a knot in at the end, I lay the thread over my index finger, lay the needle on top, and wrap it five or six times. I put those wraps again between my thumb and forefinger and gently pull, and what you have is a little knot at the end. Now the nice thing about doing this type of stitching is you don't have to trim that real light, um, small. So to do hand stitching, you are going to take a bite out of your inner fabric and a thread on the edge of what you're sewing and pull through. And I'm going to keep, so where I came out of my stitch, um, that's where my new stitch goes down. And again, I'm just picking up that crease and it's about an eighth of an inch. You can do more at a quarter. Um, I just got in the rhythm of an eighth. Um, of it, uh, I get nervous. It is a single thread that I use um, for this. And you ease whatever you need to do as you go. But you do not, the, the goal is to not see those hand stitches um, on it you still might see little bites, so you wanna match the thread the best that you can uh, to whatever you are stitching. And so I'm getting literally right on 
the edge to the inner edge of my binding and you will proceed all the way around. If you your thread breaks or you have to start a new one, the nice thing is you can tie a knot and tuck it in here and then start your new one the same way. Now, because these were circles and I wanted to put a hot coffee on it, I used Finsulate in it and put my fabric, a large piece, to what I wanted and then marked with my marking pen my blue lines so I knew where I was stitching so that they were even and I didn't rely on my presser foot. And this is water erasable. So then I just, before I did anything, I spritzed it with the iron, uh, the water, watched them disappear, and then dried them with the iron. And the wool mat also absorbed the water so I could iron on both sides. So again, to end the video, um, bias binding is best on curves, not on straight quilts. It does use more fabric to get the bias um, on it, but it's a lot of fun to do.